Hello and welcome to High Five. Have you ever known of a person or people who, despite their tragedy or loss, were able to comfort and give strength to others? I once read of this woman who, within two years, lost her husband and her father and her two sons. That's four deaths. But she was seen at the funeral of her last son, who went around graciously welcoming those who came to pay their last respect. She offered comfort to others when you would think that she is the one who needed it. On the other hand, there are people who are so devastated by personal hardship and difficulties that they find no place to give consolation to others. They certainly are in no position to help far more to give comfort to others. Now you might ask, what is the difference? And the question resonates yet deeper. Where do those people like this woman who lost four immediate members of her family and went around in each of the funeral consoling and comforting others? Where are they able to find the strength to help in times like these. Well, the Apostle Paul was one such individual who learned the secret in spite of his own personal difficulties and hardships. He was able to offer comfort to those who were going through difficult times. And he passed this bit of advice to the church at Corinth in the second epistle of second Corinthians. And let me take time to read a few verses of two Corinthians and I'm reading from chapter one. And it says, I, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and Timothy our brother to the church of God in Corinth together with all his holy people throughout Achaia. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves received. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same suffering we suffer. And verse number seven says, and our hope for you is firm because we know that just as you share in our suffering, also you share in our comfort. I'd like to pause reading there and encourage you to read the rest of the chapter. Now, if you uh, pay the close attention, you would discover in these first 11 verses, the word comfort occurs nine times. And in the epistle of uh, Corinthians, uh, the, as I read it to you, it occurs 29 times in 2 Corinthians. 29 times the word comfort. We tend to think of comfort as something that makes us feel better. I think all of us are looking for a measure of comfort and to some degree some of us are looking for some things to make us feel better. But that is not really what it is all about. We are looking for a shoulder to cry on or someone to come alongside and give us the assurance that soon everything will be better. Now the understanding of this word comfort as the Corinthian believers understood what Paul was trying to communicate to them, it carries the idea of strengthening 
strengthening rather than soothing. Strengthening rather than soothing. The Greek word, when translated into English, it means to help by giving courage. To help by giving courage. Think about that for a moment. Comfort, according to the Bible, is not about feeling better, but it is about gaining strength and feeling stronger. Comfort isn't about something you find. It is something that has to find you. Someone has to comfort you, has to bring it to you. Again, this amazing word comfort, when again translated out of the Greek tongue into English, it carries the idea to come alongside, to come alongside to help. So in this sense, the New Testament word is associated with the ministry of God the Holy Spirit, whom is sent to be our comforter and guide, who comes alongside to help us and to empower us. And that is why St. Paul says, without contradiction in verse number three, he said, Praise be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of comfort, the Father of compassion, and the God of all comfort. As we delve further into this text, it is easy to see that God the Father is the Father of all comfort. Twice, St. Paul identifies the Heavenly Father as the source of comfort. Remember, comfort isn't about just uh, feeling better. Comfort is gaining strength. Comfort is all about obtaining what the Heavenly Father can give to us, and that is what the Heavenly Father does for us in our times of weakness and stress. In 1992, in the Olympics in Barcelona, Spain, a young man by the name of Derek Redman of Great Britain was favored to win the gold medal in the 400-meter race. Redman was leading the pack, but suddenly he, sent, he was sent sprawling by the by a ripping pain in a torn hamstring. As he lay helpless on the track, the runners blew past him. He struggled to get on his feet in excruciating pain and began hopping to the finishing line, and the crowd agonized for this young man. Suddenly there was a figure who bolted out of the stands, pushing past the security guard, to go alongside Derek. It was his father. His father came out of the stands to carry him across the finishing line in spite of his son's torn hamstring in the middle of the race, and he did finish the race. This is a fine example to what our Heavenly Father does. We are in a race with a lot of stress and pressure upon us. But even though we fall several times and we trip up several times, the Holy Spirit comes alongside to help us. And our Father in His great love and compassion for us comes and give us a shoulder and a hand in order to take us across the finishing line. God Almighty, as we look at this text, gives us enough comfort for ourselves but not only enough for ourselves, we have enough to share with others. St. Paul realizes that the hardship he has endured and the strength he has received is what enabled him to help the believers who were in distress at the time when he ministered. Listen to his encouraging words again, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. For just as we share abundantly in the suffering of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are distressed, or if we are distressed, it is for your comfort. 
and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patience, endurance of the same suffering we suffer. And verse 7 says, And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our suffering, so also you share in our comfort. What an amazing word. If you are hurting for one reason, whether it be pains in your body, an emotional problem, something that is bothering your domestic life, read the text again and let the Holy Spirit bring comfort to you from his precious words. When God gives you comfort, to repeat myself, it is not just sufficient for you, the comfort that you receive, like St. Paul, you will be able to share that with others because God is the God who gives in abundance. So when this comfort comes, and it will come, in this world we would have trials and we would have all difficult situations. So it is not if it comes, when it comes. So when difficulty and hardships befall you, whether it be disabilitating pains or disease in your body, whether it be a failing marriage or your children or grandchildren or a loved one who is going astray or financial hardships and you are wondering how you're going to meet your financial commitments or there might be an attack on your life by people who are malicious towards you or it might be demonic attack. There are times at night you are restless and you lay in bed unable to sleep. Whatever it is, if you find comfort going to sleep and finding rest is no problem. So I'd like to encourage you that whenever you need comfort and whenever the pressures of life pile up on you, you must never ever give up because we serve the God of all comfort. We must learn to accept what has been coming our way, knowing that God will deliver us and he would redeem us. There are two critical words that I think that you can remember. It is the word acceptance and then resignation or given up. Acceptance rises us to meet God who fills the universe with purpose and destiny. If I can say, Lord, I thank you that even though I don't understand the reason for my distress and calamity, but I know that you would not allow any trouble to come my way that is not too difficult for me to carry, then I believe that God will meet you in your place of difficulty and give you strength for the difficulty or the strain that you might be experiencing. On the other hand, resignation would shout at you, you can't, you have to give up, you must fold up. But God says, you can, I can, I will impart to you strength. I am the God of all comfort. Acceptance, ask, now that I am here, what's next, Lord? what it is that you would have me to do. Resignation says, no, Lord, shield me from every challenge and difficulty that lies ahead of me. And acceptance says, Lord, I am ready to shoulder whatever responsibility you may give to me because I find strength in you and you can help me in my difficult situations. It was St. Paul who told the Roman church, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to them that are called according to his purpose. Word a second read, isn't it? And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. And then St. Paul said, for I can do everything through Christ who give me the strength. I can do everything through Christ who gives me the strength. And this situation that you are facing, the burden you are carrying, it will not cause you to fall on your face 
never to get up, but God will give you the strength to rise on your feet and to cross the finish, finish in line. I must choose to believe that God is there for me and he is the God of all comfort and I can do all things through him who strengthens me. It could be that I am speaking to someone who is at a low place in their lives. Life has been hard for you recently. You have had good times, but suddenly it's like the light switch has gone off and you are in a period of darkness and frustration. I believe this is a word for you. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. God's word to you is hold on. The light switch is going to be turned on and you're going to see that in your darkness that you were not there by yourself, but the God of all comfort was there with you. If for some reason that you have not made a commitment to Christ and to acknowledge him as Savior and Lord, this is a good time as any to do so. If you would simply bow in contrition before God and acknowledge the vicarious death of Jesus Christ on the cross to give his life for you that you might have eternal life. And may I ask you to join me in this simple confession of faith. So Lord Jesus, I thank you for loving me and not giving me a burden that is too difficult for me to carry. I believe in my heart that Jesus is the son of the living God who came to die for my sins and to carry my sorrow and sickness. I confessed him as my savior and as my Lord. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Change my life because I believe with my heart and I confess with my mouth. And if you will pray this prayer of confession, then you have great hope. Dig in there. Don't give up. Things are going to change. The weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. And if you are a pastor, pastor's wife, or a member of a pastor's family, and life has been meeting out very much all kinds of difficult and negative situations for you, I encourage you to stand strong in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and shift the cross to the middle of your shoulder. Don't drag it. Don't drag your feet. For God will send help for you in your time of great distress. He is the God of all comfort. Believe it and accept it. We'd like to know you. And if you can take the time to introduce yourself to us, you can either contact us through the references on the monitors on the screen or the email address that is given or the number, telephone numbers that are listed there for you. Please give us an opportunity to know you. Let us know from where you are viewing this video cast and also the platform from which you are viewing this video cast. Let us know. Give us a subscribe and a like. This program, High Five, has been coming to you for the past months through the ministry of Missions Tabernacle of William and Water Lane Streets in Princess Town. The presiding pastor there has been and still is Noelin McIntosh and his wife Annecy. They are also eager as myself to hear from you. So take the time. It's not much much of an effort to just type in a few words in the comment section and let us know that this program has been a source of strength and a blessing for you. If we know that, we ourselves would find comfort and we will be encouraged to go along and to complete more enabling program like this. Like all the programs of the past, it has been put together by Aaron Jones a quite a remarkable young man, fine young man indeed, father, husband, and a, a remarkable teacher of the Word of God. Aaron, I thank you for putting this video cast together. And for those of you who have viewed it, please just uh, share, give us a share. Send a 
a link to someone who may have missed this video cast because they may, go, may be going through a struggle and you may not know what to tell them. But this video cast might express the mind of God on your behalf for a friend or a neighbor, a loved one in a difficult situation. Send them a link so they can look at this video cast again and God will, I believe, impart strength and grace to them. I am your host, Anthony K. Well saying, saying, the Lord bless you and keep you. May the dew of heaven fall upon your head. May the God of abundant supply be on your side and may he give you favor and good success. So until next time, the Lord bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name.